Hello everybody, this is the second video on probability and statistics in the series of videos on exploratory computing with Python. My name is Mark Bakker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is continuous random variables, more specifically the normal distribution. We will start by drawing a set of numbers from a normal distribution. And for that there is a function called standard normal, which is part of the numpy sub package random. So we first import numpy as np, import numpy as np, import numpy dot random as rnd, we uh, import matplotlib dot py plot as plt, and we set matplotlib to be in line, and now we can call the function. Um, the function, like I said, is called standard normal. Standard normal, there it is. And I open the parenthesis, it tells us that it can, you can give it a size. And it returns samples from a standard normal distribution, which means the mean is equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one. So let's draw 10 of them. And you see here are 10 numbers from a standard normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. If you run this code again, we, of course, get different numbers. Let's store these 10 numbers in a variable or in an array called A, and then calculate the mean of A. The mean of A, and let's print that to the screen, mean of A, and let's also calculate the standard deviation, print standard deviation of A, and p dot std of A. And of course, this mean function is part of the numpy package, so it's np dot. And you see the standard deviation of these numbers. Let's also print a to the screen. The, the uh, mean of these 10 numbers is 0.42, and the standard deviation of 1 is 1, 0 0.06. If you run it again, you get different numbers. And you see that although we draw them from a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, the mean of those 10 numbers is not 0, and the standard deviation of those 10 numbers is not 1. But if we would draw more numbers, we would approach the underlying mean and standard deviation. So let's stop printing this to the screen and draw 100 numbers. See, now we're getting pretty close, even if we run it every time, to 0 for the mean and 1 for the standard deviation. If you do 1,000 numbers, uh, we're getting closer and closer. What now if we want to draw numbers from a, a normal distribution with a different mean and a different standard deviation? To do that, um, we draw the numbers from a standard normal distribution, we multiply those numbers by the standard deviation we want, and we add the mean. So if we specify, for example, that the mean mu is equal to 20, and the standard deviation sigma is equal to 4, then if we draw these numbers and multiply uh, the numbers drawn from a standard normal distribution with sigma, and we add the mu, then what we get is, in this case, a thousand numbers with a mean that is 19.77 and a standard deviation that's 4.02, which is very close to the mu and the sigma we specify. Of course, if you run this again, we get a thousand different numbers with a slightly different mu and a slightly different standard deviation. And we can keep doing that. Now, if you start working with real data, or in this case, generated data, it's always good to look at the data. Um, and printing a thousand numbers, in this case, to the screen isn't very useful. We do what we want to do is make graphs. And one of the graphs we can make is called a histogram. plt.hist of a. If we make that, if we do that, we get this nice plot here, and we get some numbers returned to the screen. Um, what this means is that it, the histogram function divides um, the data in categories and counts them. So, um, but the categories it picks by itself. So in this case, the categories go from 4.2 to 6.9, from 6 to 9.9.7. .9 uh, so if you look at this one here, that goes from 17.9 to 20.6. 
in that range there are 250 260 values now it's convenient that the histogram function picks those values for you but you might want to just specify your own intervals and those intervals are called bins so what if you want to say we want to have 20 bins and we want want them to range from 10 from 10 to 30. there's two keyword arguments this would be called bins there's 20 bins bins between 10 and 30 so if you run that we get this nice graphs and now you see here the second array that's returned is the bound uh, the borders of the bins so the first one goes from 10 to 11 and from 11 to 12 12 to 13 that's exactly what we wanted and these are the numbers it found in um, in here so there were only three between 10 and 11 13 between 11 and 12 and so forth if you run the data again we generate new 1000 new values and make a histogram of that you see well, we get a slightly different histogram because we have a thousand different values what I want to do next is try to draw on the same graph here the normal distribution or the probability density function of the normal distribution that we have drawn our thousand numbers from here's our distribution right it has a mu a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 4 this are the is the histogram of the thousand values that we've drawn and I want to have on that same graph a line that is the probability density function that we've drawn from for that there is a function called norm for normal distribution and norm is part of a package called scipy.stats scipy was the scientific python um, package and it has a bunch of sub packages one is called stats for statistics so we import that one we say in from scipy.stats import norm we can now use the norm function to generate values from a normal distribution or to draw the probability density function from a normal distribution uh, to do we do that as follows um, we say we want to draw <clears throat> plot probability density function for x going from well in the, our case from 10 to 30 so it's np.lin space from 10 to 30 with 100 points and our y is now the normal probability density function norm.pdf for all those x values and we have to specify the mean of the normal distribution and that's specified with the lock for location um, keyword the lock is 20 and the um, standard deviation is 4 which is defined with the scale argument scale is equal to 4 now we've drawn uh, we've computed x and y we want to plot them plt dot plot x versus y um, let's make it red we don't see anything right yet and there's a reason for that it's if you look very carefully on your screen it's here at the bottom and why is that well the probability density function probability density function has an area of one it gives you the probability of that value while the histogram that we've shown here is the number of points in the bin it's not the probability that something is inside this bin this button runs from runs from 19 to 20 and there's 110 values in it but that means if you have a thousand points that the probability is something like 10 or 11 percent to draw a histogram where the vertical axis is not the number of data values in the bins but it's the probability we add a keyword argument called normed is equal to true for normalization so we norm normalize this um, histogram by setting norm is equal to true that scales all the bins so that it doesn't show you the number of the data points in the bin but the probability that you're in the bin and then we draw that we draw the histogram again and we draw the probability density function uh, of the normal distribution that we've drawn from and that's the red line and you see it's pretty nice this red line is where we've drawn from from the blue bars is the histogram of the thousand values that we have drawn when we work with real data as we have seen in previous notebooks we use the pandas package to import the data and to do manipulations with it so let's try to repeat what we've just done in this notebook where we've used arrays by using pandas 
So we first import pandas, import pandas spd, and we're going to make a data frame. When you read data from, for example, a comma separated values file, a CSV file, it returns a data frame. And we're going to call it um, b. b is equal to pd.dataframe. We just initiate one. So now we have an empty data frame. And we say, all right, b, the very first column, which you're going to call test1, is equal to a. That's the array we've created here is a so now b has one column remember b dot head gives us the first couple values in that it has um, one column called test one with the values that are in a and the first five values are shown here why am i doing this well because we can now use the um, the functionality of pandas to calculate all the things that we've done before for example we can uh, for the entire data frame we can calculate the mean b dot mean and it gives us now that the mean for column test one is 19.85 um, in this case we only have one column so b dot mean is the same as b dot test one dot mean right that then you can only calculate the mean of column test one but we only have one column so if you run this we get the same value back and we can calculate the standard deviation and it gives you the standard deviation back we can also make a histogram of column test one hist and it gives us a nice histogram and notice that pandas automatically chooses nice column sizes uh, for this you can also tell it to use 20 bins like we've done before bins is equal to 20 and it uses 20 bins uh, why am i showing this well for one thing pandas has a lot more functionality but the other thing is pandas can work well with missing values for example, um, let's go back here, and if you say that uh, A0, the very first value, is not, well, let's see what it is, print, well, we can do that in a different part, here you go, uh, let's do a new column, or a new code cell, the first five values of A are these. And we, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace the very first value, so that's the one with index 0, with np.none. It's a missing value. So if I now show the first five values of A, you see the very first value is missing. If that's, this is A and I want to make a histogram of A, I'll do plt.hist of A, just like we've did before, and I get a horrible error message max must be larger than min in range parameter what does that mean well it means it cannot find the max value why can it not find the max value because it doesn't know what to do with that none value in there if on the other hand this is a data frame so i'm going to copy this back down i'm going to say column test one the column of test one of data frame b is called a if i now do b dot hist it happily shows it, right? And then with 20 bins, bins is equal to 20. It happily shows it's almost identical to the one above, except for one thing, the very first value is now a none, and that's not used. So there's a lot of use to pandas that can do very many other cool things. Uh, let me show you one additional thing. Um, let's make a second histogram, or add a second uh, column to the data frame so we say b of test 2 so that by just defining it we can um, add a new one a new column to the data frame and we make um, make something similar to what we had before but now we use a standard deviation of 8 but the same mu um, so now b dot head shows us, look, we have two columns. The first column has a thousand values drawn from a standard, nor from a normal distribution with me mean 20 and standard deviation four. Test two um, is a normal distribution with me mean 20 and standard deviation eight. Um, and the very first value of test one is missing. But we can still nicely draw a histogram of this, b.hist. Shows us two nice histograms. Um, one for test one and one for test two. 
And if you want to compare them, it would be nice if they used the same horizontal axis. So if we define the share axis equal to true, a keyword argument, both x axis now go from minus 1 to 50. And you see for test 1, we've drawn from a, stand, from a normal distribution with mean 20 and standard deviation 4. We get this histogram. For test 2, we've drawn from a normal distribution with mean 20 and standard deviation 8. So we get a much wider distribution and we get that histogram. That's all I got for you today. I hope to see you next time.